Hey folks, Wrath coming at you with another one. Today I want to do a quick review and post recap of the Awakening system. Give you guys ways to acquire resources and then ultimately what it takes to max out a character in this system. And then given the ambiguity of all the heroes that exist in the game, what may be an approach or two for you to level out getting your heroes awakened. And then finally, I'll give you some tips and tricks on how I'm going to how I'm going to pursue this and ultimately where my head is at. TLDR, it's probably going to be a more negatively connotated than my previous videos. So at its core, the awakening system is really just another way for you to evolve your characters. Now this time, instead of using hero copies, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using specific awakening nucleuses. Wait. I think I'm wrong. It's nuclei as the plural form of nucleus. So what you're going to do is you're going to acquire these awakening nuclei to help further progress your hero from an evolutionary perspective. And upon doing so, there's going to be 10 separate levels that you unlock. And I would say levels 1, 3, and 5, specifically 5, is going to be where a lot of people are going to want to get to. Or at least that's my impression of what they've done with Daniel. Because at level 5 Awakening, Daniel actually gets an additional ultimate that allows him and his bear to do a significant more damage than and they this did is because previously. it allows you to build Dan in a crit build instead of a typical attack build that could not crit. Because in the past, prior to this system, summons don't crit. They can't crit. And so with, with this addition, uh, you'll, you'll be able to skyrocket to new damage thresholds. Now, this is where I have a little bit of hope because previous characters like Emma, like Crete, that people have maxed out can suddenly become relevant. And I'll talk near the end of the video about what my thoughts about that are, but it, it allows for the opportunity for a lot of characters that we haven't seen to, to come back to life and potentially have usability in the game once again. All right, so let's switch gears to the two resources that you need in game and where you can acquire them to do the awakening and then unlock the additional potential levels. So the first thing Specific that you need is a crystal that allows you to awaken them. And then you'll need the crystal nucleus dust that allow you to unlock the potential levels. So you could either get the nucleus outright or you can get 60 of the nucleus shards to make one effectively. So the places that I know of that you can get them in game right now are the store and the next section we'll talk about what the actual cost is to get it going. You can get 30 tokens from the new virtual training shop by doing the digital war um, side game I, I would call it. it it's now officially a full full game mode you can get it from giant tower so this week we had a giant tower event where you trade four of the giant tower tokens to get some of these crystal nuclear shards and then finally uh, a mirror of malformation which which they've identified is going to be another source where we can get some there is one more that i haven't mentioned and it's sort of like a universal shard or a universal crystal that you can get we haven't really gotten full information on how it can be used and when those additional heroes can be awakened and what you can do to potentially hoard some of those but it, it's a universal one similar to i guess if you compare it to the prototypes you know how the prototypes have the universal crystal well they're gonna have chaos shards that are um, that are available for you to do the same thing for awakening so this brings me to my third point about what will be the actual cost of doing this and you could take it either as a free-to-play route or as a mix between them or completely cracking out and buy buy the awakening crystals from the get-go so if you did notice from my earlier clip it takes 20 crystals to fully awaken a hero so if you're going by the limited packs that they have here they sell two crystals for one stack again that's two crystals for a hundred dollars meaning it's going to require thousand dollars for you to fully awaken an old ass hero that's barely 
relevant in the current meta and may just have uses in guild hunt so I'll, I'll get to the negative lead later i promise but right now what i'm saying is that the cost to awaken a hero is way too high if you do a mix of it or if you decide to go down the free-to-play route completely and let's just use some dirty napkin math you'd get one full awakening crystal using the virtual shop from the digital war so that effectively you would either need 200 days or the equivalent of approximately six and a half months to awaken a full hero that's not taking into consideration any additional heroes that get awakened um so that that's that's a long ass time now if you sprinkle in giant tower events if you sprinkle in mirror of malformation you could probably do that in a truncated amount of time let's say between three to four months so you're gonna have to make some determinations in game about when and who to awaken all right so let's switch to the last part of the video and this is where i'm gonna get down into negative vibes for talking about the new system um ultimately i don't feel good about it i, I think it's it's an okay way for them to try and basically put some lipstick on a pig and color it something different but at the end of the day you know the power creep is real and instead of doing a proper balance of characters like they should have what they're doing is they're introducing a new gimmicky system whose cost is way too high and whose time would be way too long from a free-to-play for anybody to kind of compete unless they're dishing out significant amounts of money up front so i would say i'm a tad disappointed here um i, I think that they, they could have done a much better way of finding a balancing strategy much better way of introducing a new mechanic that made all heroes instead of old deprecated ones uh relevant again now the power will creep and it will continue to creep uh, like in all games right and the disparity between free to play and pay to win and kraken is just widening significantly more so this is what i'm gonna do and i recommend that you guys do the same conserve your resources be very diligent about when you're gonna use your limited cards be very diligent who you're gonna awaken i think the biggest drawback is going to be that if they release these heroes on a two-week interval to coincide with giant tower events which there's a lot of speculation about i think it's going to make it very difficult and if they do stick to that schedule then my advice would be to focus on one hero and get them to level five awakening now assuming that that is the threshold for the new ultimate skill for every hero coming up i think that's the one that you should aim for everything above and beyond that to awakening 10 is is gravy when you compare it to the ultimate skill and the fundamental changes that that does to a hero like we've seen with daniel for those that don't know daniel's changes make him very relevant and the highest dps for turbine at this point in time he still sucks in pvp but he can push out the deeps in uh in guild hunt so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video i know it's a little bit more negative than than all my other ones i do want to say for a gotcha game that's coming out with ways for you to basically pay rent to play the game it's um it's not good and it's losing a lot of folks and my clan and cluster has lost a ton of folks who are really good so hope to catch you guys on the next one uh, let me know if you agree or disagree with me again my uh my feedback's kind of raw so I'm, I'm definitely open to changing my opinion if, if I am looking at it incorrectly. But until the next one, peace.